Hello, welcome to Regime Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 31 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about creating and calling inline table valued functions. Where do we use inline table valued functions? Now, before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 30 of this video series. In part 30, we have seen how to create and call scalar user defined functions. In this part, we'll learn about inline table valued functions. We know that a scalar function returns a scalar value, a single value, whereas an inline table valued function returns a table. Now, let's look at an example of creating an inline table valued function. Now, if you look at this, I've got an employee table which has got ID, name, date of birth, gender, and department ID columns. Now, I want you to write a function that can give me the output that you can see on the right-hand side. You know, the function should return employees by gender. For example, if I pass to your function gender as male, I want only the male employees to be returned. And along the same lines, if I pass the gender as female, and I only want the female employees to be returned. Okay, and to do that, we use the create function statement as we have used it to create scalar function. Okay, so create, if you look at the, you know, implementation of the function here, it's very simple to understand. So we use the create function statement. So create function, function name, and fn underscore employees by gender is the name of the function because we are going to return employees by gender. And if you look at this, obviously this function needs a parameter at gender of type nvarchar whose length is 10. Okay, since gender is a string, we use nvarchar data type. And then this function returns table. Okay, so this is the parameter that we are passing into this function at gender. And this function returns table. If you remember in part 30, you know, where we spoke about scalar user defined functions, scalar function return a scalar data type. For example, maybe nvarchar or integer or date time, you know, a scalar value. But we want this function now to return a list of employees by gender. Okay, so obviously we want this function to return a table. So we are specifying table as the return type from this function using the returns keyword. And then we are using as keyword and return. Look at this. For an inline table valued function, we are not using the begin and end block. If you remember, for the scalar user defined function, we had begin and end block. The function body was enclosed within that block. But for an inline table valued function, it's a compile time error to have, um, you know, basically the begin and end block. You cannot have it for an inline table valued function. So immediately after the as keyword, you specify the return. And within brackets, you specify your select statement. OK, so what do we want here? We want ID name, date of birth, gender, and department ID columns. So specify them in your select list from TBL employees table, where gender equals at gender parameter, whatever the user is going to pass in. OK, so we are using that parameter there. And we are enclosing that entire select statement in parentheses. OK, just, I mean, even if you don't indicate that, we don't get an error. But, but it is more readable now. After whatever is present in, the, in this parenthesis is completed, return the output of the execution, you know, of the execution result of the select statement back to the calling application. So when somebody calls your function, return whatever your select statement is selecting here. Okay, so if you notice, there are three points to keep in mind when we compare inline table valued functions with scalar um, user defined functions. Now, with scalar functions, I mean, with inline table valued functions, we specify table as the return type, whereas for scalar functions, we specify any of the scalar data types like integer, nvarchar, etc. Okay, and for scalar functions, you know, here the function body is not enclosed between begin and end block. The structure of the table, this is very important. Now look at this, you're telling your function it's going to return a table. But what are the columns that are going to be present in, the da in that table? You know, basically the structure of the table, we are not defining that here, okay? So the structure of the table will be determined by the select statement that you have. So obviously the table that this function is going to return is going to have one, two, three, four, five columns because your select query has five columns within its select list, 
okay so the structure of the table that gets returned is determined by the select statement within the function body okay but later in the next session we'll be talking about multi statement table valued function there we have the luxury of specifying the structure of the table within the return after the return keyword we'll talk about that in the next session okay so let's look quickly you know creating how to create this function so if you look at this I have this TBL employees table which is called the columns that we have seen on the slide and to create the function we use the create function keyword the name of the function and then obviously the parameter that we want to pass along with its data type returns table you specify the as keyword return and your select statement within brackets okay so let's execute this so when I execute command complete it successfully okay so where did this function get created if you look at the context we are executing this query in the sample database so once I expand sample database go to programmability and then to functions there you should see table valued functions in part 30 when we created scalar function that was stored within the scalar valued functions table but this is a table valued function an inline table valued function so that gets stored in this table valued functions folder if you can't see that just refresh it and expand the plus sign you should see the function that we have just created which is fn underscore employees by gender okay now let us see how to call this function so obviously to call this function you know we use the syntax select star from the function name and then pass whatever parameters you have to pass to that function now this function returns a table so treat as if it is a table okay now if we want to select from a table we will say select star from that table name similarly this is an inline table valued function just issue a select statement against this inline table valued function as if you would issue a select statement against a table so select star from that function name okay so let's see how to execute that so select star from I want all the male employees so I'm passing in mail and when we execute this query we only get the male employees back and along the same lines if I want female employees I just pass female and execute the query so I only get the female employees okay that's the syntax that we use to execute I mean to call the function now if you want you can even say use the where clause you know from with the table we can use the where clause even with the function you can use the where clause okay this is a inline table valued function we get a table back so treat as if it's a table and you can just say where name is equal to maybe Pam I only get Pam's record now when we execute this all right okay so where can we actually use this inline table valued function okay um, you can use I mean inline table valued functions can be used to achieve the functionality of parameterized views now what are what is a view and what are parameterized views we haven't spoken about them yet we'll be talking about them in our later sessions so until then don't worry about this point but just keep in mind that inline table valued functions are an exceptional replacement for parameterized views which we will talk about in detail in a later session okay and another place where you can actually use this inline table valued function you know is that you can actually use it in joins as well you know we know that this inline table valued function returns a table so the table returned by the table valued function can be used in joins with other tables okay so if you look at this when we execute this query select star from function employees by gender uh, we got this result back since I am passing in mail as the parameter value I get all male employees like this that you can see on the slide now if you look at the output we have got department ID in the returned table by this function okay now what I want you to do is I want you to join this return table with departments table so that you can give me the output that you can see here I want the name of the employee their gender and their department name if you look at the table returned by the function you don't have department name in that table so obviously you will have to join the returned table with the departments table okay and if you're new to joins we have already spoken extensively about joins in part 12 and 13 of this video series please check those parts 
Okay. Now, if you look at the query here, it's pretty simple. Just like how you join a table with another table, we do exactly the same thing. Okay. So first of all, what are the columns that we want? We want the name, gender, and department name. So you specify them in your select list. Select name, gender, department name. From you specify your function name, passing it the parameter that you want. Here we want to pass in mail because we want the mail employees. So function name, mail employees, and then give it an alias, just like how you would give an alias to a table. Okay. E for the function and then join TBL department D on department.id with employee.department.id. Okay, that's about it. So you can even use the table that is returned by an inline table valued function in a join. Let's see the query. So here you have that select name, gender, department name from the function, give it an alias, join with TBL department, give it another alias D on department.id equals employee.department.id. So when we execute that, we get the output that we expect. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.